The Cool Contraption Guy with Tom Fox, workshop editor for Boys Quest and Fun for Kids magazines, presents Make a UV Genuine Diamond Detector. Here is what you will need to make the genuine diamond detector. Here is a 330 ohm resistor. If this resistor wasn't part of the circuit, the LED would burn out in less than a second. With it, the LED should last for many years. This part is available at Radio Shack and many other electronic suppliers, including MagicLandElectronics.com. This is a 9 volt battery connector. This part not only connects the battery to the simple circuit, but also functions as a simple switch. This part is also available at Radio Shack and at MagicLandElectronics.com. This special UV LED is the hardest part to find. It produces 380 nanometer ultraviolet light. While Radio Shack sells UV LEDs, they only sell LEDs that generate 395 nanometer UV light. 395 nanometer UV light does a very poor job when it comes to finding out whether a diamond is genuine, although it is okay for detecting counterfeit money. This part is available in, in an inexpensive kit, which includes a 330 ohm resistor and a 9 volt battery connector from MagicLandElectronics.com. Check their website for present prices and availability. By the way, a 380 nanometer UV LED also does a superior job when used in my counterfeit money detector. See the YouTube video on the same channel. You also need a 9 volt battery like this along with some electrical tape. Both are widely available at hardware and other general merchandise stores. This is the wiring guide. Notice how simple the project is and how few parts are needed. The next video clip will show how to connect wires together while solder. If you ha are able to solder and have a soldering iron, that is of course the best way to go. The first step to make a connection without solder is to twist the ends of the wires together. Now in this case here where we're trying to put a resistor lead connected to the uh, black wire that comes from the connector we first remove the little insulation uh, from with the side cutters. Then we twist, the, we use our fingers to twist the wires together as nice and tight. And then we like to use uh, long nose pliers to secure the connection and also to make a little, uh, little hook where we can uh, squeeze the wires together so they're more secure physically. We, we want to also make a good, fairly good physical connection and also a good, uh, of course, electrical connection. Actually, both are extremely important because if you don't have a good physical connection, they'll just fall apart. But we'll show in a second. See now we look check that it looks like it. now we want to do is secure it even more with electric tape. Well, of course, one thing is we use it for insulation purposes. Here it's mainly used to secure the connections. Now we see that we have finished the wiring all three connections were made and we have all the parts connected together. The final step will be to tape these parts that are connected to the battery. But before we do that, we will have to tape the battery to insulate it from any bare wires here. In this final step of making our real diamond detector, what we want to do is tape all the parts to the battery. And this way we won't need to bother with a case. We also will show you shortly that we don't need to bother with our actual switch because we use the battery connector as a switch. Now make sure this is uh, it's quite secure with the tape. Uh, and you got to, of course, leave the LED at the bottom as shown uh, to uh, so be able to use it. It, it works quite well, this uh, method, and it, uh, it saves 
a lot of money. It's a very inexpensive project. Most expensive part is the the battery. And uh, if you if you're a judicious shopper, you can get a very inexpensive uh, uh, battery connector, which will do the job. Now we show how to uh, put the connector on. You put it on just that one little contactor then you can use that as the switch you'll see you just slide it see you slide it on or slide it off slide it on slide it off and uh, it really works quite well because it uh, there's no expense or problem with uh, another switch here's another shot of that off and on off and notice though violet color of this uh, LED. It's kind of strange, but it also what it happens is it produces invisible ultraviolet light, and that's what is useful here. We showed how to make the UV genuine diamond detector. Now we show how to use it. Notice we are operating in near total darkness. While the UV LED emits mostly invisible ultraviolet light, it also emits a bit of visible violet light. When the UV LED is absorbed by a diamond, the diamond emits a pretty bluish light. The diamond also reflects some of the LED's visible violet light, which you can see at times. Rhinestone or cubic zirconia will reflect the visible violet light, but does not emit blue light. Using the diamond detector, it appears this ring I tested for a friend looks like it has a small diamond in the middle of the setting with several tiny diamonds on its side. Looks like my friend got what he paid for. This ring has the rather large diamond-like stone as a solitary setting. Notice one thing first off. The stone doesn't appear that it glows at all, and definitely doesn't glow bluish like the stones in the last ring did. This large stone is in all likelihood an inexpensive rhinestone. Now we are testing a small cubic zirconia. I purchased this stone from an online seller that sells costume jewelry to crafters. While cubic zirconia is sometimes hard to tell from genuine diamonds in normal light, it is easy to tell it isn't a diamond using the UV Genuine Diamond Detector. I would really appreciate it if you see my other YouTube videos on my Cool Contraption Guy and Magic on Farms YouTube channels. Thanks for watching.